I've found Nigeria to be one of the most talented places you. I've ever been in oh, my life. You, I just, before you came, I told and I, you. And I, this, Crazy. this time, oh, I mean Nigeria. Mm. Mm. The rest of Africa, you people. <laughs> you have a lot, you have mm. lot catching up to two points. <laughs> no disrespect. No, but, shout out to Ghana, though. You know, <laughs> no, shout out to where? <laughs> You know, what's your name? What do you do? Right now, I'm the stunned guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you stunned about? What's, what's make you... I mean, you just come from Ghana, right? Yeah. And it was, it was fun. I'm Straight guessing, from Marutala. That's did you go to the Global um, Citizen Conference? No, no, is it Global it's Citizen? It's a concert. It's a concert, yeah. No. You didn't not, go to that? I'm not big on music like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. No. So the... I mean, you, you don't have any... Is the, your brand is in Ghana. Do you have activity in Ghana? Yeah. That's good. Okay, so, and what's the name of your company? Drinks Energy. Nice, and your name yeah. is? Larry. Nice. Larry. Okay, yes. and where in London are you? Because obviously I just love having one of us in the studio sometimes. So. I'm not one of you, I've been here You've for changed. a while. Oh. He's changed, he's one so of I, them what, now. How many years mark do you become That's why. That's of... why he's saying that people are viable. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's he didn't say that. Apart from that, to me, it's also a, it's a bit of a mental orientation, right? So... I grew up in the UK till 14, 15. Oh, wow. Then I came to Nigeria 15 till wow. 21. Oh. And then I went back at 21 till 31. But um, my formidable years when I learned everything was between 15 and 21. Makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Forms, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's what forms who you are 100%. as an adult yeah um and then the uk had influences so yeah i don't i don't i don't really see myself as a yeah he's right you're not you're not yeah. um you've maintained your accent well but you're not one of you're which not... one <laughs> <laughs> how many accents do you have do you have a, like a nigerian and also uk or because like it's like it's balanced it's very I can hear a balanced accent right now it's, bro if i go Both. to every coast i have a francophone accent too really to parler francais yeah, it's about the money man <laughs> 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 whatever, whatever the money speaks, you go and speak there. Well, okay, it's where in London or UK were you from? So we we were born in Clapham, Battersea type oh, area. So I've got a South man in the house. Yeah. I don't mind. Too. No, my whole life is South. Uh, South London. Yeah, then grew up in Deptford. Uh, Whoa. Came back to Nigeria. Um, came to Southwest Nigeria. Really? To keep it consistent with South. <laughs> um, Damn. And I I I'm, I live with my grandma in Mushi. Um, I went Whoa. to uh, Isolo secondary school, then I went to Cancun secondary school. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, you were really in the bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, no, from, all the way from South London, then you went to the to bits. Mushin, to yeah, Mushin. Yeah, yeah. South Mushin, then to Badagri. Um, then from there, back to London. So I went to Deptford, and then from Deptford, New Cross, and then now I have a house um, in Orpington. Um, oh, yeah. Um, which is just another shitty South, just white shitty South. Yeah, white, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the you don't like that side of things. No, but no, no, no. It's not that. But I just hate people thinking shitty only comes from black people. They're shitty, but everything. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now you've lived a colorful kind of location life. Yeah, more colorful than I'd like to speak. I don't want anyone else to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. if if like you're you're in like in Lagos right now, how long have you spent in Lagos since you ten moved years. back? Well, ten years next year, March first of March next year, be ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Are you are you over forty? Yes. Really? Yeah. You're looking good. Thank you. The babes are treating you well here. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you're about it, but what's your preference? Mm. <laughs> Do you send do you send free drinks to the baby's house in Lagos? So I mean how do you? <laughs> I don't know matter. Do you I mean matters, you know Biggie, right? Biggie. No, I don't know Biggie. You don't know Biggie Smalls. Oh Biggie Smalls, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I mean oh I thought I thought that somebody you called Biggie that. Because we call no, Biggie. I know Biggie. I know Biggie yeah. Smalls, yeah. Yeah. So do I need to call two pack, three pack? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you heard of the ten crack commandments? <laughs> 
you, you obey the Ten Commandments. So I ain't sending nobody free shit of anything. <laughs> So they don't get no free drinks. And nobody get free anything. Ah, oh, man. Wow. You don't take care of the girls. Say yes to <laughs> Nigerian man that buy us champagne. <laughs> None this one, this one, one likes champagne, by the way. No, Sorry? no. She likes champagne. Yeah. I like champagne too. It just depends who's paying. <laughs> <laughs> I love champagne. <laughs> So have you brought your London stingy man mentality to Nigeria? Because yeah, because you know, the Nigerian London girls think that London people are stingy. <laughs> no, so Nigeria as a country and as a culture yes. is very closely similar to America. Mm-hmm. America is very capitalist in nature. Um, you see how you look at Nigeria and you say there's too many 419 man Mm -hmm. there's too many this this that everyone's about their money blah 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 Mm -hmm. bro go to New York the cabman will try and rip you off I'm telling you the cabman will try and rip you off Miami Miami is small fry yeah compared to New York New York is the hustle place first of all in Miami for anyone to bother trying to scam you you need to have real money Mm -hmm, yeah so let's Mm -hmm. just start with like for like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. America is (laughs) book (laughs) bureau New York is like more book bureau Miami to even go to Miami and anyone even to bother looking at you, you, mm-hmm. you I mean it's a bit harder to front in Miami yeah I agree do you understand mm-hmm. what I mean the clubs are more about it the drinks are, are more about it mm-hmm. everything you know is, is very you have different. to be of somebody but in New York it's like Lagos you can front and get away with shit mm-hmm. New York is the hustle mm-hmm. you know it's the camouflage it's the hustle Everybody. Yes, I call it London on steroids, actually. No, nah, it's York. not London on steroids. London's a shithole. What are you talking about? Well, New York London. is not a shithole. No, l- l- New York is a capitalist shithole. L- London sh- is just a shithole. New York shit-hole. is, I can't stand it, literally. Well, well New York, no, so yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot just, of... Just to correct myself, I want to say London's a shithole in terms of... <laughs> Like I like London. I love London. It's my city, but you don't. Know, you don't think it's a good place to be. I think London is. A, I would agree with if you. If you are, if you are rich mm. already, or or slightly upper middle class, London's great. If you're not, your experience in London is shit. Interesting. Especially for black people. Mm. I mean, at the moment, you're forced to stay in the burbs to to go to a club. You can't even go to the city. What the mm. fuck is that? That's actually, I know the, the couple of black people live in the suburbs as well in just London. Starts, man. And they travel like four, like an hour just to go into the city to go out and to stuff go like out, that. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, you I can't, mean, yeah. The, the problem I have with London is if you are a black person mm. that is ready to be mentally recolonized, then you'll love it. <laughs> I love what he just said because we talk about this. We call it selling your soul. Yeah, you know, yeah, 100%. You know, you're. Yeah. You know, don't 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 get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Every everybody every you know, we all love mm-hmm. a variety of dinner. Mm-hmm. But when you completely become a vegetarian, hundred percent. Uh, like, you, if if that's what you want to do, mm-hmm. but why should you have to do that to be able to enjoy your money and fit into a society? Mm. So for that reason, London lets me down. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. I I have to make sure I I sit down my my back up, you know. I know a lot of G boys who go to London and they literally have to overspend to fit into that society, mm. which they're indirectly saying, well, fuck you. I can afford to be here. Yeah, yeah. And those people would just be like, oh yeah, you're fun because you're spending money. Mm. Really? You're just a dickhead. Yeah. No one cares about you. You're just a dickhead. Yeah. So, so I mean, you came, you left London to set up a business in Nigeria. Is that yeah, right? Yes, or yes we- and no. So, um, initially, uh, I left London to help a friend set up a business here uh, about 13 years or, or three years earlier. Um, so he ran a movie streaming business, which at the time was called Nollywood Love. Um, so I, I ran the London office um, while he did the rest of it. And then uh, they got some investment um, and then we continued to work. And then uh, I was in charge of marketing and payments. Um, so there's a few payment issues at the time. Uh, so I had to come to Nigeria to sort out the payment issues and I came for two weeks. Uh, and I was like, by the way, I, I completely, growing up, I had really bad eczema. Same. And sneeze I everywhere. Now. Yeah. Um, and I had it for a while. And when I came back when I was like 15 to six, 21, um, I literally just don't remember anything to do with it. When I say I had bad eczema, like my arm wouldn't straighten out because wow. it cracked so much. You can get injury. Like, yeah. I just oh, couldn't, wow. and the back of my knees would just crack so much. It was just like a big issue. Yeah. But I literally couldn't remember anything when I was 15 to 21 about, like my mum could never leave me to go to school on my own because she just had to do so many things to, to my skin it, yeah, because of the eczema to yeah. make it easy. And then I was like, oh, I don't remember that shit. 
I've never liked the cold and I've never adapted to the cold. And people will tell you, oh, you've been, you've been in the UK for so long. Okay, cool. You've been in Nigeria for so long. Are you used to poverty? <laughs> hey. Like I don't understand. Wahala. Being, being in something for so long doesn't make you get used to it. Mm. Uh, you can literally, I mean, some people have been in marriages for 30 years and they hate each other. You don't get used to what you don't like. Mm. You just don't like it, right? Um, so I came back then and I just realized for like two weeks, I was just like, ah, now I get it. Everything about me, externally, internally, and mentally, <laughs> just likes the sun. <laughs> um, and Nigeria was a bit of a trip then. Went, came back again for three months. And within that three months, I was just like, yeah. I it's mean, a, yeah, place that you want to be. It was dope to to be able to work. Waking like generally, I just wake up at five in the morning. In in London, it, it wasn't the same. I used to wake up five in the morning. I'm tired. No, I, I just wake up five in the morning. I can't do nothing about it, but because it's dark and it's cold, and then, I just yeah. knock my damn till six <laughs> because there's nothing else. You can't, do, you can't even wake up. I go no, to work or something. Because it's cold. <laughs> It's dark. Yeah. This is like you understand what I mean. So, um, did you go to uni in London? In the yeah, UK? yeah, I did. What, what uni did you go to? Uh, Guildhall. I went to shit uni. I was a serious pre uni. <laughs> what did you study? I studied marketing, multimedia. I did. I ah. mean, you know the funny thing is, just for anyone else. Yeah. Like, in secondary school, I was the joker. Okay. But secondary school wasn't that hard. I used to fail, 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 fail. When it comes to exams, I just do well. Mm. Your teachers hated me. Because I was just like this unserious bum that just did well at the end. <laughs> and they just couldn't understand. Mm. Like I used to fail all the tests because I just never took them seriously. But when I knew that mum will kill me, <laughs> then I just buckle down and I just pass and then I'd be okay. Mm. Um, so I was always just scaling through. I never did exceptionally well, but um, I had the ability to. Yeah. Um, and then uh, obviously that affected me going to uni. But to be honest with you, I was never a big believer in education. Um, okay. I didn't give a shit about education. I still don't. Mm. Um, Zion's my daughter. Mm. Um, I keep telling you, and I'm still telling you now. You need <laughs> a waste of time. Um, <laughs> you said as a school. Really? Sorry? You said as a school. No, my mother sent her. I didn't send her. I'm paying, but I didn't. Send her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're still you're still contributing to the to the education system, then basically. No, I'm contributing to my daughter's <laughs> happiness. <laughs> Okay, so if, 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 but if not education, what alternative then in your, to you? What did you study? Economics and finance and investment management. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you didn't go to uni, mm -hmm. remember all you did in uni was pick up a book. I did some other things, but yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> not what you think. Not what you think. It was actually even worse than what you think. <laughs> 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 hey boy. Uh, I won't say too much today, but we're off camera. <laughs> but yeah, go on, man. <laughs> I think you need to do an interview on her. <laughs> <laughs> I said that earlier, didn't you? <laughs> um, unless you, unless you want to be like a doctor, yeah, a lawyer, mm -hmm. a, a, a pharmacist, a dentist, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real need for Ooh, the educational I'm gonna system. I'm going to debate you a little bit on this one. So. Yeah. I always understand what people are coming from when they say anti-education, but I feel like education... anti-education. Okay, cool. Adi anti-educational structure, remember? Okay. Institutional education, you can exactly. say that. Which is yeah. what I think is actually good because in yeah. any topic, yeah. yeah, so for example, I studied investment because I wanted to be a portfolio yeah. manager, which is, you know, I wanted to work in the hedge fund industry, yeah. which is exactly what I went on to do. Yeah. Now, what education did, and I still did more courses after, it gave me structure to learn about certain things. Whereas when you learn by doing... What certain things? So for example, right, if I want to learn how to manage a portfolio, I can learn by doing, right? Yeah. I, I trade on the side and yeah. I've learned a lot by trading. Yeah. However, when I also learned it through structured education, it gave me like a structured way to deal with it. So both of them are risen Slow to down. me. When you say okay. you learned through structured education, what did you learn? Uh, you, you read a book. Yeah, books and classes and yeah. Classes, what did they teach you in class? They okay. followed the, the, the syllabus of the book. Yeah. But so, there are there are teachers in the education system that do kind of expand your knowledge into for one hour. Not one hour. You spend there's there's, there's the lecturer and there's the tutoring session after, right? Or I don't know what so if I was, went to the same university, but, okay, so, like, yeah, but there's a lecture and there's tutoring session after. I always taught my like I'm literally an autodidact, so everything I learn I taught myself. I couldn't go to university. They, I used to get a lot of trouble in sixth form because I never went to class. So on your point, I agree. Some of us cannot accept information from someone just teaching at us for one hour. Mm. I was that person. However, I'm still saying the still the structured 
education and the courses, I genuinely believe it is it is beneficial. Yeah, no problem. I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you. Here. <laughs> but this is this is subliminally. But right here is a list of three years of what the syllabus is for university. You're done. What you're saying you need is right there on paper. Mm. Yeah, but like, like I need to go to a class and I need to structure myself over four years to just follow a syllabus. It's discipline yes. as well. Not everybody's that disciplined and to social do that. skills and so, yeah. So, so it's actually so giving you a structure to discipline. When you finish university, who helps you with discipline in your life, your finances? You, you learn that about yourself, but then again, those things you actually don't learn do it for help uni, you, right? They, don't, they do help you. University you don't learn it don't, for uni. depends. Depends on what uni doesn't teach you, but I'm the coming. experience of uni does teach you. The yeah. only thing uni taught me was how to drink, how to fuck, and how to party. <laughs> but <laughs> the, uh, you spend more well, time doing those things. You, you spend more time doing those things and oh, learning. Oh, by the way, we need the top of our drink. I need the top of. No, 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 no. No, like I'm sorry. No, I get it. I get, but you spend more time doing those things than actually studying. That that really does depends on every individual, mm-hmm. and and it depends on how well you want to do in uni. But don't tell me the guy standing there for one hour mm. is what made me get through. Facts, uni. I agree with that. Yeah, no, no, facts, no, 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 that's yeah. true. Yeah, don't, not the person. It's, it's all depending on you and your own I, kind I'm of space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm with you on that. So, so, so if you're telling me discipline is why you go, mm. uh, I, I disagree. What what it is is that. All of us are the same, right? Mm. We we could all get out of hand if there's completely no structural discipline. But, you know, when you were younger, you begged for freedom. Mm. And you begged for freedom for different things. I want to go out there and drink. I want to go out there and sleep with women. I want to go out there and have fun. I want to go out there and party. Bros, you got tired. You got tired. The only thing that disciplines anyone is you. So how did you get the discipline to build literally one of the biggest, if not the biggest drinks brand in the whole of Lagos or maybe Nigeria. How did Shout you... out to Drinks or Engie. Drinks or Engie. So yeah. how did you get the discipline to fear, build that? Fear of poverty and mm. success of friends. And success of so you friends. Had a good network, yeah. You had a okay. good network around you? Um, no, no, not really, no. I okay. Mean, so, I, 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 so before I joined the rock, I was working for a, a, an American company called Core Metrics. Okay. Um... Actually, no, let me go further back from that. So at the age of 24, um, or the age of 22, first of all, actually, I used to run for, I used to, I was an athlete. I used to run. Um, wow. I broke my no foot. do you look young. Yeah. That's my parents. Oh, the jeans. Yeah, my parents look young. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So if anybody wants kids, they'll be young. So What state is that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm Shout out to the fear. future baby mamas of Larry, though. <laughs> Say no to Nigeria, man. I like already. I don't want no more. <laughs> I'm looking for a wife. wife. I have one. I have one. <laughs> but more this is Dr. Part 2 in the studio. No, don't try that. Don't try that. Okay, Core cool Metrics. Cool You're going to pour my drink, Gavin. <laughs> no, so I, I used to work for a company called Core cool Metrics. Okay. And uh, they were an American um, analytics firm. Mm. This was the very early days of analytics. Yeah. So, um, you know, what they used to do is, you know, you come onto a website, you buy stuff, we follow you to different websites, we make sure we try mm. to advertise to you. This is like remarketing mm. 101. Mm. Um, some of our clients then were uh, H&M, Selfridges, HP, so many different companies. So it really gave me insight to the power of uh, digital. Mm. And, um, and I used to go to America every three months. So I used to go mm. to Silicon Valley every three months. And, uh, you know, my athletics career was over, so I had to think of what else to do. So I just kept on doing my digital marketing then. When I went to America, first of all, I was going to Silicon Valley. And first of all, it just looks, it actually looks amazing how you could just be walking down an Oxford Street, for example, mm-hmm. but an Oxford Street, not for shopping, but for companies. And you can imagine Selfridges, but there's like 20 of them and they're all mm. Google buildings. Mm. Wow. And then there's, there's, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, mm. there's this, there's that, and, and they're literally all just there. Yeah, that's and achievable, then, yeah. You know, and then, you know, you go to a bar in the afternoon and you know how London gives you this false sense of uh, security, <laughs> especially being a black guy. Mm. You walk in, you know, especially when you work in the city yeah. as well. You think you're someone, you think you're someone. You think you're someone. And that's what it did. I mean, you, know, you walk into this bar, I'm like, you know, mid mid to, to later 20s. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm black, I'm in Silicon Valley, I'm from London. <laughs> like, shit, I'm, 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 I'm the one, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself out here. And you see one 16 year old boy, he's like, oh, hey, hey man, how you doing? He's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. It's like, oh, what are you doing here? It's like, yeah, yeah. I work with core metrics at that time i was probably earning like 50k a year mm. for me 50k a year yeah and those like 30k days as well. bonuses yeah. yeah bro i could go into a club and spend a g and, I'm, and, and I'm like, <laughs> bro, 
bruv, this dude is 16 100. years old wearing trainers and shorts and he's just sitting in the bar with a tequila. Um, I was going to say he's like 18, he's not allowed to tequila. There's one guy, this particular guy was 16, the first one was drinking water and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, hey man, where are you from? I'm from London. He's like, ah, oh, shit, bro. Oh, so what are you doing here? I was like, I work for Cometrics, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, one of the digital markets and then he's like, oh, what'd you do? Oh yeah, I run a startup. We just got like $25 million investment, blah, blah. You huh? work there. No, 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 I run it. Huh? Huh? Crazy. You do what? Mm. You quickly become insignificant. And you see that guy? <laughs> yeah. There are hundreds of them. Hundreds mm. of them, yeah, just come. They're just hundreds mm. of them. Hundreds. And then when I say hundreds of them, mm. there are hundreds of them. The, the beauty of Silicon Valley when you walk around is, it's great you see the LinkedIn's and the Googles and the stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then you see so many other companies and you mm. think, who's that? I went to a club one day and uh, there was this Chinese guy. He must have been like 24. Um, and I'm with uh, some of my bosses. Ooh, they're kind of young as well. Like they were early 30s then. Uh, but you know, they're cool. So we had a few girls with us. This boy had like 15 models with him. <laughs> and Sounds like America's a, of matching, God. Uh, no, 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 now you're saying of God. <laughs> so he, he invited us over because he, he was the only guy and there's a bunch of girls. He invited us over which usually happened a lot early those days. Mm. He, he invited us over because of me. It's like, oh, black guy. Cool guy. Cool <laughs> you, 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 more girls. You know, that's, that's true. Let me, let me satisfy these lots thirst. Yeah, you <laughs> um, and we got talking and everything. And, and at, at that time, this was 2016 or so, that guy was like 24, 25. He ran a $150 million firm. Mm. And yeah. I'm like... Hmm. And you think you're How? the guy, and you just see someone else. Dude, just... It's one of the very few times in my life that question yourself the baddest, <laughs> baddest chicks <laughs> on the table have been trying to talk to me, and I'm like, fam, <laughs> <laughs> let me talk about this one for 15 million. What, why did you do this? <laughs> I don't want to see any chicks right see, now. <laughs> I wasn't interested in nothing but the bag, and then you quickly realize which is the one thing the UK does to you mm. is we, we, we accept relevance in insignificance. Trust me, very myopic in our, in our thinking. The because UK. London is everything because mm. yep. Europe is so, Europe is, is, is so economically it's big, but technically it's tiny. Mm. 100%. But because we're in London and we feel like we overlord it against the whole of Europe, mm-hmm. you mm. think you're bigger than what you are. Yeah, 100%. because the, the environment you gain, the, you, everybody gets a basic level of luxury that you think is amazing. Yeah, and I think it's the history but of the... it's how, actually facade. It's, it's not the even British just that. Empire, though, the history of the British Empire mm. so, you and know, everything. You know, you know, as black people, just coming through the cracks is success. Mm-hmm. And in America, because the cracks are so low, their ambition is just so high. Whereas in London... I mean, bro, don't get me wrong. Like a like, like a council estate is, is is not the greatest, but it ain't bad. Mm. A project mm. in America mm. is bad. Mm. Bro, you know girls can get raped climbing up this. You know when you live in a council estate, mm. you go up the staircase. Mm. A girl can get raped coming up the staircase going to a neighbor's well, house in the in projects America. in America. What? Huh. America's no joke. Mm. So the level of hunger and ambition for them is a lot higher. Yeah, I, I'm not saying now. I'm talking about back then. Mm. Um, before anyone starts casting me and saying, "What's this one talking about?" So, so anyway, those guys just really created a lot of ambition in me. Mm. And funny enough, I got home, uh, and about a week later, I was just sitting. I never stopped thinking about that guy for a long time. Amazing. Uh, for a long, I've been, I've been really chick knacking, but I'll stop. <laughs> These guys in my head. <laughs> 150 M. That's what you're thinking about. The numbers just keep going around. Yeah, it's, it's more the 24. Yeah, the, the age. 24. Yeah. You have to remember, I'm late 20s. Hit the then. belly, and he's not a footballer, not an mm. athlete, no nothing. So that's another thing. Exactly. Yeah. So you, 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 did you go there to wanting to become a footballer? Like, do you think your sports team career is going to help mm. you gain stuff? No, I genuinely actually liked athletics. I love it. Oh, okay. I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I literally. You're quite tall as well. How tall yeah, are you? So? Six two. Yeah, no. Shout in, out in to Lagos honesty, girls. Amen. To, yeah. Shout out to men over six. Yeah. No, you know the funny thing. You know the funniest thing is like, just just for people growing up for these type of things, right? Bad things can be good. Mm. Um, I got into athletics for a bad thing. Like, <laughs> I used to I used to play a lot of basketball. I hate basketball. I did though. And um, my dad was like, okay, I finished secondary school, but I, I didn't do too well. I was just okay. And my dad said, yeah, I need to do redo the last year. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not saying in this country. Like, <laughs> And he's like, well, 
you go to school, do this, or you stay doing nothing. And I'm like, okay, cool. You get tired of seeing me doing nothing, or I go back to school. And it was a case of who's going to get tired of who, me doing nothing, or him with his friends watching me do nothing. Mm. So from the basketball, um, literally no good. I lived, lived in no good then. Wow. Um, so there's a basketball court, and just across the road from basketball, there's a primary school. Mm. And you know how the primary schools are, local primary schools, just mud huts. Mm. Well, not mud huts, but, hey. but mushroom huts everywhere. <laughs> mushroom. But there was like a there was like a break in the wall that people used to walk through to get to Into a jota. Oh, wow. And one day I was just like, <laughs> what they was going to do there? So I went and I went and I saw some of my friends there and they were smoking weed. And I was like, oh. At what age, sorry? I was six, 17. Okay, that's all right then. So I'm like, yeah. oh. Uh, you know what? This thing, because I was a basketball player and I used to see people just, these were all the weed smokers. As far as I was concerned, my dad, he was like, these people are criminals mm-hmm. and this, that. Man, I was scared shitless of anything to do with weed. So I was just like, okay, I followed them through it one day and I was like, ah, saw some of my friends. I was like, ah, what's this thing all about? I was like, you know, let me try it. We tried it. So I just tried it. I was like, okay. I was like, whatever, man. All of a sudden, I just got hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, that's the first, the first. Munchies hit you. Munchies right. threw away. But I was just, nothing was happening. But I just was hungry. So I said, okay, cool. They said, let's go to Ikeja to get food. Back then, Lagos wasn't as the way it was then. Mm. So yeah, there was a Mr. Big, so it was in Ikeja. There was an ice cream factory in Ikeja. So one or a couple like of that. two of places that mm. you can go to. Yeah, yeah, so we went there. Bro, we'll come and have Ogudu. Someone cracked a joke. Laughed from Ogudu. All the way to <laughs> I don't know, I, to a point, I don't know what the joke was. We just look at each other as you're controlling yourself from the laugh, look at each other, and the laugh was just kicking again. <laughs> and from that day onwards, I was like, that shit was dope. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep that. I want to replicate that. <laughs> um, and I played less basketball and smoked more weed. Oh, really? um, And then I just did that for like for, oh, two years. Crazy. Wow! Just did nothing but smoke weed and chill. I mean, I I've seen so much. I, shit I, in my I, life. And what were the other guys doing with their lives at the time? Same as me. Basketball. So it was a basketball. No, we no, smoke oh, weed and I, chill. I mean, like, <laughs> it, 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 I went outside the weed. Weed and chill. Nothing. I mean, you, you know. No, unfortunately, Nigeria hasn't changed much from mm. back then. Everybody was trying to get into university. Those not trying to get into university were trying to get out of the country. So okay, all okay. the guys around me were trying to get out of the country. Okay, um, okay. I knew mine was just a case of I had a passport. Mine was just <laughs> just give me my shit. Let me go. <laughs> 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 and my parents just didn't didn't let me. Um, ah. I won't even say this. I saw so much during those periods, but eventually oh. my parents were just like, I mean, I remember one day my, oh, my dad was distraught about this whole weed. He didn't, he never knew I smoked weed, mm-hmm. um, but he knew. Mm. Um, one day he even walked through the school looking for me. All the drug boys were like, Larry, isn't that your dad? I was like, oh shit, let me hide. He hid me. I was hiding, still smoking. <laughs> That's how just nonsense I was. Mm. And then one day, um, I was just sitting on, you know, like I said, the school's like mushrooms. Mm-hmm. So I'm just sitting on the fence, I'm just smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And I just noticed these guys just running. They were wearing athletics gear, everything, and they're just running. Run. And you know when you smoke weed? I know you know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> London man, no. Sorry, yes, I, don't, I know you don't know. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're on the other side of life. We're yeah. good. <laughs> good boy. No. And I, you know, you just get fixated, mm, and I just yeah. became fixated on yeah. it. Yeah, just watching, watching. I think it's watching. a misconception that weed is not mid- addictive, especially if someone is missing something in their life. I think people tend to use it as medication subliminally, especially again. I don't know. You probably weren't mixing it with tobacco, but I think what I've seen in the UK, a lot of young black men and women have an addiction to smoking weed. But really? Yeah. But well, don't you think that weed is now should be coming more? Um, normalized in Nigeria now. You know, before it was actually taboo. Like, this guy, this smoking boy, you're a bad person. No, no, no. People actually smoke it regularly no, now. No, no, no. Let me correct you. Yeah. Nigeria has always been the same. Mm-hmm. The only thing that has become different is how open things have become. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Our I'm saying. Our fathers was... was exactly. See, you see My how Nigerians will tell you doing this and that is bad, but they're they doing, doing it. They were doing it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, if anybody Facts. wants to know, go to Landmark whenever there's a wedding. Come out of Landmark, go around the front of the beachfront. <laughs> If you don't see your father, you see your uncle. <laughs> Tracks, no. I've been told by that generation. Weed. Yeah. They all, yeah. Every, see, most adult men smoke. I have a lot of yeah. orgas. I've s- seen it. They'll call me, ah, Larry, call your people to help me bring something. Okay. They'll bring it. Ah, 
call my office. Where are you taking that thing to? Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me go and greet the my chairman. I will go there. Baba is like 80 years old, 70 years old, 60 years old. He's sitting down one 20 year old in his lap. Ah, all right, you can't see us. Blah, blah, blah. No to Nigeria, man. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, bros, I just came to greet you. Blah, 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 blah. Like, and I'm thinking... <laughs> I think this girl for us now. <laughs> <laughs> so so mm. another thing I was thinking like okay so with drinks in you right exactly. who are the um who's the most people that buy drinks from you like what institutions is it the clubs or is it the restaurant and and you, yeah, would is you it kind more of, B2B or like B2C yeah. sales so this is, this is this is this is a good question it's a good opportunity for me to knock people down a peg or two okay um the club owners take credit mm. want the lowest prices and they don't pay on time <laughs> because they think they they're the volume. Most. Yeah, mm. that's what I was gonna say. Think, I, I I knew this. I knew they this. Think mm. They're the baddest guys, and they think I don't supply many clubs anymore. Mm. Um, take the opportunity. Shout out to Buzzbar. They always pay their bills. Nice. Shout out to Quillox. They always pay their shout bills. Shout out to mm. Quillox. Them are always busy. Shout out to DNA. They always mm. pay their bills. Mm. Shout shout out to the Yahoo boys at Quillox. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> Questionable money. Yeah. Every everybody else who's a big club, they, they are debtors. <laughs> I said it. They are debtors. So who are the big? Uh, I mean, them can come to my face and tell me I'm lying. But other than the clubs, though, like uh, restaurants and other, are there other kind of bigger? Establishment that buys drinks from you guys. How many bottles you ever popped in the restaurant? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't know, man. Because you know what I'm saying, but boy, we've been going to some restaurants and you know what I'm saying, and what? Like, wine and you know what I'm saying. How many? It one max three. Uh, yeah. well, restaurants not in the conversation. But, but, but my my question weddings more is weddings are the biggest platform in that. Weddings. Yeah, weddings, yeah. I can tell you something, and it's good for you, the clubs to know so they can come down on their high horse. <laughs> what they buy a month, a month. There are many weddings that will buy mm, once. Especially Yoruba weddings. Once. Yeah. One day. Hmm. I'm not even talking about wedding and, and engagement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just wedding. They'll buy what those clubs buy a day, including Buzz Buying Quillocks. Hmm. That's crazy. But but my question to you, though, is, you know, from a business perspective, don't you put the terms? Don't you agree the terms? So I know how supermarkets normally work on that kind of 90-day credit policy. Are you saying to them, okay, here's the drinks. And what did you, you just say? You said, you know, the supermarkets work yeah. on 90-day policy. Yeah. So whose terms are it? The supermarket. That's what I'm asking you, isn't it? Are you not agreeing terms to say to them, okay, you can pay me in a certain amount of time? Um, so I think you, you you had a politician on here previously yes. before me. Yes, we did, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> they, they would have, you know, oh, okay. told you a whole lot of promises that they'll okay. make for the Nigerian people. Okay. Yeah, okay. everybody follows that same line. Mm. A lot of promises. But the term is, as they say in politics, many people win the election. Who mm. announces the winner? Mm. Whoever sets terms will make no difference. Whoever has the power, which Makes is the person sense, that has yeah. the product and has to pay, yeah. the power shifts. So do you see yourself now going to build a relationship with the person that has the power to make sure that your terms are getting filled? No, no, no. The way I do business, I always retain power. Mm. Mm, I don't exactly, do, yeah. I don't do nonsense. So cash on delivery, basically, or cash Not on... necessarily. Well, yes and no, but it really does depend on the type of business you do, the mm. type of people you do business do with. So for, for us, we focus more on weddings. Mm. Okay. Ain't no one coming to me for a wedding and asking me for credit. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, you, lose, you lose margin, but you get your money up front. Yeah. Um, with the clubs, um, they seem attractive to a lot of people, and there's so many people desperate to get into the business that they will fall foul to a lot of these club owners and lounges and restaurants and re hotels mm -hmm. and they just won't get their money. But not me. I've, we've gone past that. Mm -hmm. you know, we've gone past that. And are you importing, I'm assuming? No, 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 no. We, we, we don't import though. Okay, I want to, I want to no, <laughs> So how do you get your drinks? Oh, there, there are people that import and we get from the brand okay. owners. Or the <laughs> You're trying to mess me up out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's interesting to know because okay, so so looking at the guys like coming I mean, from 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 I'm a bit new to the whole like this beverage uh, um, uh -huh. business, right? How? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but from a business no, perspective, not from a consumption. Okay, that, I'm no, still on the other side. Right? Don't worry, don't so, worry. So so if if you look, I hear that the guys like Obi Kubana, these guys are really pushing a lot of drinks around. Where do, like, how does this sit? So where, where does he sit among the? The drink hierarchy. He's or, a club owner. He's a club owner. Really? So he just buys drinks from of you guys. Course. Okay. 
So he's not he doesn't have any special deal with the brands that they can they can get the drinks directly to them or like how does no why this is a supply chain yeah. supply chain yeah uh, okay I mean look, he's big he's big for himself but this is the supply chain mm. okay I mean he has his own products where he has some wines he has Odogo bitters which mm. are his own mm. in terms of everything else there's a supply chain he follow the supply chain mm. 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 yeah it doesn't matter I mean look does he buy from you not anymore not anymore damn damn why <sighs> he doesn't pay. I did say that though. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to him. <laughs> he has his own preferred suppliers. No, he okay. doesn't buy from us anymore. I want to ask you, because when I first came to Nigeria, there was always this conspiracy about fake drinks. And I've actually seen Fast. on Instablog Niger, that I've seen some of the dents in your state, your state, them men do a lot of fake drinks. <laughs> what state are you from? Delta. <laughs> I've seen the in east Delta? in the east yeah. as well. I've seen a couple of dens over there. So, no, so is that real? Fake, or? fake drinks is yeah. in down to states. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God, man. You're actually trying to no, pull my state on the bus. In Nigeria, you know? though, is on there there state, Yahoo boys buying fake drinks. Mind your alone. business. Leave us alone. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you two things. Right? Okay, yeah. Uh, number one, contrary to people's belief, there are fake drinks in every single country in the world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, every mm-hmm. single country, and mm-hmm. every country I've been to, I've seen. Mm. Um, Nigeria is not unique. Yeah. Um, secondly, uh, for anybody in the trade, mm-hmm. when they buy fake drinks, they're aware. Okay. So if you go to any establishment and you serve fake drinks, yeah, don't pay them. Hold them accountable okay. because they're aware. And when I say they're aware, mm. they may not be able to tell real from fake. But if you have four suppliers and they tell you Hennessy is 30k per bottle and one guy comes and says it's 20k per bottle and you go for the cheapest price, my guy, don't tell me you're not aware. Mm. Why would you, you know, you have one guy is 30k, another guy 31, another guy 28. Yeah, they're in and around. And mm. one other guy comes, he's 20. Yeah. We're not that greedy. Why would we be so far away from this guy? Mm-hmm. So you you know that there's a likely chance there's something dodgy about this product and yeah. you buy it. So okay. when you buy it, you you know you're running the risk of yeah. what it is. So if it happens to you in any establishment, hold them accountable. Okay. It's the only way to stop them from doing the nonsense they're doing. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are just stupid and greedy because at the end of the day, you're buying something for 30,000. You're selling for almost 80,000. Fam, the margins like, these men are making on drinks, yeah. It's, it's the crazy. problem with them is they have too many girls to look after, too much lifestyle that they can't afford to maintain, mm. that every little they try to crop into. But mm. if they just maintained a healthy, good lifestyle, they could have a very good lifestyle and in a good margin, but they always want more than what they can afford. What's an, what's an average number of girls have on your rotation? I don't know. Why are you asking me these things? <laughs> Because you just said that these guys don't have healthy lives. I'm actually, but I don't know. I don't know how many. I need, got. To, I need new, a new co-host on this show. Get it out of here, man. Let's not talk about your rotation, boy. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I actually wanted to like ask a more serious question. <laughs> and more of the history of drinks to NG because a couple of us are startup founders, especially we have many in our network, and I wanted to know. What were the difficulties in starting an alcohol brand in Nigeria, especially in regards to funding? Did you receive capital from outside in the early days or how did you bootstrap? How did you build the company? So we, uh, as I said, I used to work at Iroko. Yeah. I um, was a marketing director there. Mm-hmm. We built the company up to, before I left, about $20, 25000000 million worth of investment. Wow. Uh, once we got there, everything was like on autopilot. Um, and then I just went to Jason and Bastion and said, look, you don't do <laughs> um, you know, Nigeria had a lot of opportunity. Um, so I was actually one of the groomsmen at Jason's wedding. And uh, in London, I organized the, not just batch party, but organized the the, the fun stuff because I was the, they say irresponsible. Hmm. That, guy. Say the <laughs> that guy. That <laughs> guy. Um, and uh, so I organized a nice trip, went to Brighton. Wow. Went to, yeah, no, sorry, went to Bristol, not Brighton, sorry. Okay. Damn. So we went to Crack Bristol. City. Mm. Sorry? Crack City. That's why hey, I call Bristol. Don't know about Crack City. <laughs> 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 yeah, I went to Bristol. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of friends that went to uni at Bristol. So yeah, I knew so Bristol did I. A it's a good Bristol's uni. A nice, yeah, it's a good decent uni. uni. <laughs> good city, nice. Mm. Uh, it's a well, Crack City, you know. Put <laughs> the bike in, well, everything. We had a lot of fun. Went out clubbing. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to do the same thing in Nigeria. And so... In order to organize the drinks, I was now like, okay, so where do we, you know, in London, just went to Majestic Wines, got the drinks. Right, mm. Majestic, <laughs> Majestic Wines, wine, yeah. saving a lot of people's lives. Yeah, very simple, right? Wholesale and then in Nigeria, we're just like, 
everyone was like, yeah, I have a guy's number I can give you. A guy's number. I was like, mm. no, my domestic wife. I heard, I heard there was a lot of fake and everything. I don't want no yeah, guy's exactly. number. Just yeah. tell me where to go. There was nowhere to go. Mm. It was either this guy they were going to call or the open market. I was like, what the fuck? Mm. I right, cool. Let me go to this open market. Oh, boy. Hmm. Prices. Like, fake drinks. You know, you know Gladiator? <laughs> the movie? Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> you have to fight. Oh, it's mad. Really? Oh, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. I was just like... Is it like a cartel structure or mad in what way? Cartel structure slightly. Okay. But it's just, there's just no experience. Okay. And yeah, you okay. just run risks throughout. Like, oh, you <laughs> paid for these drinks. I'm woman to carry sure. my head. Man, if that drink drops, it don't drop. Yo, your money's gone. Done. Like, <laughs> your money's gone. a messed up place, like, I swear. Hey, sometimes, yeah, when you have like... A, have you ever had like a trailer truck of your goods and you're just thinking, please, don't just go and crash somewhere. No, because if, if it does, it's over. <laughs> now, literally, like, yeah. you need insurance to live in this country. <laughs> You need God. No, you, you need God and insurance. So no, you need insurance, and you need foreign insurance to insure you against insurance. Mm. That's how Nigeria really was, and I just thought mm. this is ridiculous. Anyway, mm. I mean, back then we bought drinks it was like two m. It took us like five or six hours. Wow. To get this sorted, um, yeah. Went to the wedding, um, got mash up, had a fun <laughs> time, and then afterwards I was just thinking, like, I mean, I, I used to invest in in wine when I was in the UK. Oh, really? Um, yeah, okay. I used to invest in wine at the grape stage. Um, I, I was a very big advocate of the consumption of alcohol. Okay. So, <laughs> Why does he look so young? Well, after consuming <laughs> so much alcohol. I said it's the genes. But yeah. Yeah. It's the genes. You consume a lot of alcohol, you look old. Exactly. Yeah, you look alcohol true. ages yeah, people. Yeah. 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 My mom and dad literally. What's a drink of choice? I wanted to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me Glenn Fiddich, because... No, no he's, so, a, he's a champagne guy. No, no. Please. No, so I, I like, I, I just, you know, in, in, my, in, my, in my position now, especially, I just get to taste so many different things. That's what mm. I was going to say, yeah. Um, I, I have a preference of category, not a preference of brand. Okay, okay. Um, okay. And, and I don't have a preference of a brand because I've tasted so much good liquor. Mm. But I also don't have a preference of brand because the brands will kill me. Mm. Mm. Okay, so yeah. category. Single malt and champagne. Single malt, okay. Single malt whiskeys and champagne. See, I love, yeah. I love it. What type of champagne? It's like you're not listening to me. I've been <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's but champagne, yeah, it's true. It's, it's all, it's we'll all champagne off, made we'll of talk, made of grape. We'll talk off yeah. camera. All champagne made of grape. <laughs> yeah. And is the way they process the grape differently? Uh, can you talk about the process of making the champagne? Maybe that you want to. It's just the city. Is that it the same? All the same. I mean, not all the same. Not all the same. No, yeah, no. Yes, I know. Mm. I mean, yes, yes, I know. So the way they make dumpy, uh, there's a, there's a slight integrated process of mm. how it's done, but but technically it's the same thing. Mm. Mm. Technically, it's the same thing. Some things are more traditional, some things are more modern, mm -hmm. but technically it's the same. Thing. Someone came to my house one time and sweared on Ace of Spades as the best champagne. I didn't agree. Ace Do you agree? Ace of Spades. Slightly or, sli <laughs> or not slightly? Careful, <laughs> <laughs> slightly or not slightly? All right. Okay. Why does Glenn Fiddich have such a chokehold on Nigerian men or whiskey? Have you been able to understand the correlation? He's, he's, he's also a chokehold on him. He's, he just says more whiskey. Glenn Fiddich or whiskey? Okay. But, well, okay. If I look at the whiskey of choice, it tends Glenn Fiddich has a chokehold on them. Depends who you're talking to. Okay. Clearly, you date chairman. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even date men that are three years older than me. I don't even go do three years. I'm 28. No, no, but some people like Martel, though. I don't do anybody over 30. So I definitely don't date chairman. It's just that I, I am uh, I always this around Nigeria. men. Chairman is a man with money. <laughs> I am always around it men. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't, I was around men. And I'm tired of just hearing Glenn Fiddich. Okay, the reasons they tell me is, okay, you don't get a hangover later. It's smooth. and But I'm just tired of just the chokehold that drink has on these guys. No, so here's, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. here's, here's, here's my opinion. I mm -hmm. Say it's the, the fact, it's my opinion. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, uh, I addressed the first one of whiskey. <laughs> no, no, I know you think I'll get back there. Then. Okay. okay. Uh, but it, whiskey, but what people don't really understand is Africa as a whole, uh, mm. to almost the world, is a whiskey drinking nation. Wow, I didn't um, know that. Africa is a whiskey drinking nation. Okay. Uh, whether it's blended whiskey, single malt whiskeys, triple mm. still whiskeys, uh, Irish whiskeys, Japanese whiskeys, but it's a it's a more predominant. Shout out to Japanese whiskey, though. Anyway, okay. <laughs> they, they, they know they sell shit. <laughs> 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 they know they sell for the wrong yeah. people. Go ahead. But uh, Africa is a blended whiskey I nation. I didn't know that. that okay. Was, no, no, no. I mean, mm. if you look at, I mean, when you talk about Africa, you talk about the masses. Yes. Yeah. Africa's not the guys you date. 
<laughs> Very true. They're, they're, and they're not the guys in the day. Yeah. Most people would drink whiskey. Mm. Um, Nigeria previously, to a degree, was a gin nation, but that was mm. more for traditional reasons. But it's, oh, it's oh, a gogoro and... No, gogoro is a gogoro. It's not gin. Okay. Gogoro is a gogoro. Okay. Then gin is a yeah. Chelsea. Okay. You know, Chelsea dried in. I like gin. Um, I'm a aromatic gin guy. You've got me into gin now. Mm. Yeah. Aromatic shit. Well, you're not going to like those ones. No. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, it's Google. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it still is, you know, Best Whiskey, McDowell's, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Walker. People tend to think looking at the upper class is what determines what Africa is. Mm. And it's mm. not. You people are like, what? Max, Max, it's last, sachet. last, last. Three it's to five sachet, million. guys. FMCG, mm. guys. Three to five million of mm. you. Last. I'm and, learning that recently now. But... Uh, you know, Cognac, Hennessy, and Co. Mm. Into perspective, what Hennessy probably does. 200,000 cases above. So me, I want to know Gordon's Best gin. Best whiskey. Gordon's gin. One million the in the sachet. Best whiskey. One million up. The cheap, is that cheap? One million dollars. One had million it. cases. Cases, okay. Is it cheap? Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Best whiskey But that's the cheap. market. And beer, are there big, beer, big consumers uh, here as well. Everywhere yeah? in the world is a big, a big beer consumer. consuming nation. You know okay, what I okay. realized? I went to the rural area once and I saw drinks in like sachet. Yeah, oh yeah, this this, got, yeah. Did they have best whiskey in that? Every they have these every things. every localized drink in Sasha. No, every localized drink. Localized drink. Yes. Drink. So yeah. it has to be made in Nigeria. Mm, to a degree, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because those guys make money though. Of course, more yeah. than the the bigger brands. Doesn't work like that. Mm. Mm. Doesn't work like that, and I, and I don't know people's balance sheets, so I don't know. But <laughs> you actually have an idea. You have a list. No, of no, idea. no. But obviously, look. When you, it's, as far as I'm concerned, anything mass market makes a lot of money. Yeah, volume mm. is how to make money in Africa. Everything's money. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think politicians do politics? Yeah, it's, it's volume. Why do you yeah. think pastors do churches? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mass it's, it's the volume. And also, Calypso. I read a, I read an academic study. I know we don't like education here. I read an academic study, and it was talking about how to sell to Africans, and it spoke about how packetization is how to sell to Africans. Mm. Saturization. 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 Everything is saturized, Nigeria. You can, you know, you have to understand, um, if we take the masses into consideration, Mm -hmm. people live hand to mouth. Exactly, exactly. So the typical journey of of an average Nigerian would be to go home, get off the bus. As soon as they get off the bus, they stop at the people (sighs) at the bus stop, (sighs) buy a sachet of oil, buy a a couple of eggs, buy a tin of rice, buy a potato. They're doing what they can make then because it's what they can afford. Mm -hmm. That's what saturation has done to Do you realise that the price per volume is actually more expensive in the sachet than the bottled drinks? It is, but at the end of the day, it's about affordability. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm saying that the company is actually making more money because it's actually well, more expensive. That's what per the study volume. is about. It's yeah, about it that's how to sell because mm. most people are lower middle class. So you There's sell no middle class. Okay, we can discuss <laughs> that. <as well. laughs> There's nothing to discuss at the end of the day. We can discuss that. If, oh, you, have, oh, if, you, have, if you have five to ten girls in a flat in Lecky. You call them middle class because they're lucky. I've never but you known. You forget the fact that there's five or ten of them in the flat. I've never been exposed to boys. girls like, to that kind of plenty. Girls and boys, plenty. They share five to ten in the, in the plenty. flat. Plenty. They're like Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to lucky boys. <laughs> Shout out to lucky girls. <laughs> Shout out to them Indians in the UK. Fifteen man up in the house. <laughs> Man. Or the Romanians, you just see them coming out the house mm-hmm. one by one. Hey, and there's one sex dungeon at the top floor. Yeah, no, it's it's people seem to think it's just an Asian thing, but it's not. Nigerians do the same thing. God damn. The same thing. And they all you know, have the their bins outside. Yeah. Um you know, apologies to his sister, she doesn't know but those no, girls can't, are can't. after him. So they need access yeah, to him. Yeah, and yeah, to yeah. get yeah. to him, yes, we, yeah. you can't be living on the mainland, going to the island, being in the club, and it's like, oh, it's 11 o'clock, I need to go past the bridge, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You need to be there, you need to mm. stay there. That's why I just thank God for life. Cause I, I even want to speak to you about that. Like, do you think, what do you think of this Japa movement? Because it's like a, it's a big cloud happening at the moment in Nigeria. Mm. A lot of the founders in my network right now are crying because they're losing talent day by day mm-hmm. and they're struggling to find good talent. What do you think about all these people that just want to leave this country by all means and think that the UK or the US is greener pastures for them? So there's two ways of looking at it, if you ask me. Okay. Um, uh, slight apologies to the guys behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, you either like or not like what I say. It really mm-hmm. does depend. You say that now. Um, my preference would always be to grow Africa and to grow people in Africa. Mm. However, 
Um, believe it or not, Nigerians probably have one of the best attitudes to work in Africa. Really? But the rest of Africa is terrible. <laughs> Everybody's slow and lazy. Listen, I've been hearing this a lot. <laughs> God damn, that's why they, 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 I'm telling you, I noticed that same thing as well. Nigerians are hardworking people. Everyone else, they're just chilling, man. They're like Wait, Jamaican. Let's, so let's slow down. There's no. two ways of looking at it. When Nigerians no. are hardworking and they work well, I mean, they're even better than people in the West, if you ask me. Mm. But when they want to behave like Nigerians, mm. it stress you out. Bastards. <laughs> stress you out. So when it comes to the Jaqua mentality, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think there's pros and cons about it. Yeah. Nigerians tend to believe that the few, whenever they have talent, mm-hmm. feel they can hold businesses to ransom. Yes, I've heard this. When... Yeah. The only thing this Jackman mentality did for us was to increase our costs. Mm. But it it allowed us to say, do you know, I'm actually tired of dealing with this rubbish. If I have to pay top dollar, then let me just go with people that behave well, respect Mm. work rules well. And, you know, COVID was a good and bad thing. For me, it was just a good and good thing. It was good for the society of Nigeria. It was good for business landscape because employment is now global. Mm. The same way Amazon can recruit Nigerians is the same way we can recruit Americans. We may not have the power and the money and everything, but it at least opens up our option pool. Mm. Um, so it's it's good for the Nigerians to be able to seek greener pastures. It's good for the businesses to mm-hmm. be able to also seek greener pastures in terms of employees. Mm-hmm. But on a whole, um, especially for companies that are operating in Nigeria, it's bad for Nigeria, bad for the continent, bad for the hmm. country. Mm. And um, they're losing talent. We're losing key talent. I mean, look, it's really weird how people are just seeing this now. But we, we, you know, you know, the difference now mm. is that um, the talent we're losing now affects our daily lives. Exactly. People couldn't make bank transfers exactly. and stuff like. Trust me. But we've yeah. been losing talent. For decades, decades. Mm. since the 80s, but then again, it's yeah. moving. No, it's, it's happening in drones now. Engineers. Like it's not like it's not. It's like, always been happening in drones. drones. The only yes. difference now is yeah. the basic stuff that you need. Yeah. You all feel like you can rely on yourself, mm. yeah. but you forget everything on your phone that you class as yourself <sighs> facts, facts. is it's not else. relying on you. Facts. It's relying on some talent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now even that talent is gone. Mm-hmm, mm. mm-hmm. So now it affects you more, bro. Trust doctors me. have been leaving Nigeria for. Every they said twelve every day we're leaving. Mate, it's facts. gone a yeah. long time ago. It's, it's not new. Time, it's not a yeah. new thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You that's, know, that's Nigerians who are average get to Europe and excel. One thing I know about Nigerians is the opportunity to learn. They grab it. Yeah, and mm. they learn quickly. They yeah. just don't get a chance to. Um, it's a bit like your guy here, who's yeah. your 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 director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't know how many views you have, <laughs> but. <laughs> Kule. <laughs> Shout out to Kule. Oh, Kule, are we live? <laughs> However, do you know why? Mm. He's probably spends more time working mm-hmm. and he has too many problems to survive, to think about. Definitely. That he doesn't have the time to enjoy his Someone job. Someone stole his generator two weeks ago. <laughs> Hey, you need to find a person and break their legs. But anyway, that's the I've got some guys day. for you, Kule. We'll yeah, talk we'll about that, that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see... I, I, I never judged him for not knowing. I think mm. it was bad, but I knew he loves his job. He does. And if he had the chance to, he would immerse himself in that job. Wait, definitely. But does that job give him enough money to forget about his problems? Mm-hmm. No. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Exactly. So it doesn't make him a bad talent. Facts. It makes him a stretched talent. Mm-hmm. Because he's, he's stretching his love 100%. and his ability mm. with survival. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, Survival will always take precedence. Facts. It will all, no matter what you love, it will take precedence. I mean, look, you walk around Lagos, you see lots of pretty girls. Most guys see Shout pretty out to girls. Lagos girls. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm coming to a serious point though. You see lots of pretty girls, and most people see those pretty girls and think to themselves, that's just something to poke. And I can because I've got money. <sighs> but what they forget is when GT Bank and Heineken do their fashion week, Dude, there's more pretty girls come there. Come and see those pretty girls <laughs> aspiring and really loving, trying to become a model. Mm. And you think to yourself, these girls live for this one week mm. of this fashion show. Mm. Because after this one week, 
And then the other Nobody one, sees them panicking, again. the opportunities are dead for them. Mm. Mm. No, and that's why I asked you the question because what I started to realize was in the UK, all them men want to cry about. And I, I mean, I was one of them that had a black network in my old hedge fund and things like that, but I got tired of it because all they want to cry about is white people knowing their privilege. However, when I moved back, I had to understand that us IJGBs, we need to kind of understand our privilege as well because whilst the UK and London in particular is a shithole, it has provided some advantages mm -hmm. and it also has given us the privilege to actually decide at 20 something. So let me give you something. Okay. Okay. What's there are advantages, but what most would call an advantage, I call a disadvantage due okay. to our, our individual weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people born and bred in the UK. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people that have left Nigeria, gone back to the UK. I just use the UK as an example, but all over the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. They get there, they excel in that society. And the first thing they do when they start to excel in that society is to inbred themselves into, into that the society. Oh, yeah. Preach. Home I'll coconuts. Talk, I'll talk about this all the time. Coconuts. Home now becomes a Bounty. holiday. Yeah. Now, <laughs> what Africans have I, I worked in um you know where the IMAX is in Cinema. London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In in Padding is it is that no, no, um, Waterloo. No, Waterloo. Waterloo, 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 okay. Yeah. So right opposite here, you see you probably didn't notice what it is, it's like they like this creamish building, their apartments. Okay. And I worked there for at uni doing nights and security. Wow. So I to I How many stuff. lives have you lived? Oh yeah, no, I've loved I you know, I love they've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> Shout out to DSDS DS cards. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to getting your security card. GS4. <laughs> GS4. <laughs> so because I work nights, mm. um, it was seven to seven and people lived there. Mm. I got a chance to meet. And because it was in Waterloo and it was opposite the Royal Albert, well, not oh, Royal yeah. Hall. Yeah. There was a theatre near there mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I got to meet like affluent. so many people, mm -hmm. not just affluent. There's, so I met a lot of affluent people. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of people that come from nothing. So there was a guy who's the biggest antique seller of cars. He was even in the James Bond movie, one of the James Bond movie with his cars. Mm -hmm. He had the great cars. I met the prime minister's daughters of Afghanistan, China, nice. Uzbekistan. Um, those Stan Stan places, they mm. have money. money. <laughs> Absolutely. Shout out to the standards. <laughs> they use the oil money properly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have money. Um, I met Glenn Close, who I drooled over for an hour. Wow. Um, you know Glenn Close? I don't know Glenn Close. Yeah, you do. You just didn't know her name was Glenn Close. Like really? Me. really? Oh, he's yeah. popular. Like, he's had a famous face. <laughs> you remember? Oh, probably not her face. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, shit. I definitely know Glenn Close there, but keep going. <laughs> you, remember, you, you remember Fatal Attraction? Jesus Christ. Fatal Attraction. Oh, it's a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember you talking about yeah, that. Yeah, so met her, um, David Hasselhoff. Kanye okay, I know West. him. That's Baywatch guy. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So many of these people. And because, and, and, and lots of other people and big guys and hedge funds and stuff, but nice. because we work nights, um, it was always us that call to their apartments, this problem, that problem, that problem. So you get close to them. Lee Evans, nice. who was probably one of the biggest inspirations in my life. Amazing. Um, these guys come to their apartments, we have a fix, you know, they'll call you, go to their apartment, fix stuff. So you know when you're walking into people's apartments, it's their job to be your friend mm. because you see their life mm. um, and they don't want you to teeth from them too. <laughs> Just be, be um, yourself and then you be know, humble. Friend. And um, they come back from clubs and stuff drunk. They need you to help them take them to their apartment. Yes. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, I get to talk to a lot of these people. So mm. you know one thing the Chinese do that the Africans don't do? Mm. The Chinese all send their kids to Western universities, mm. you should talk to these people. Mm. See, everything they're doing in uni, they're learning to, yeah, to take back to facts. China. Yeah, facts. They're not learning it yeah. to implement it in the West. 100%. They're learning it to take it back home. That's 100%. Absolutely fact, yeah, I, I went to a senior yeah, Chinese, that, That's like, what they do, yeah. There's nothing about them. The, what they do, mm. the West is, the Chinese and the Arabs, the West is fun turf. Mm. Come to uni here, all the Chinese guys and girls live in that apartment. Ah, they lived, man. Yeah. Ferraris, Porsches, imagine. 911 turbos, everything. Mm. It imagine. was just a playground. Mm. And yeah. once uni was done after three years, mm -hmm. man's gone. But I feel like some Nigerians are like that, though. No. No, no, no. I'll be honest uh, with you. Some Nigerians are like, so elite families. No. Let's, let's, Elite families don't build shit. Exactly. I don't agree, Doctor. What do you mean by that? that? Elite families just come back to continue what they've got. They don't exactly. really expand in it. And you can't build a nation off of just elite families. How many of them are there? 
Mm. You send so many people and so much talent abroad to learn and then the knowledge just stays there. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. So, so like, one reason why I, I want to have faith in Nigeria, but I don't, which I mentioned earlier off camera, is mm -hmm. that I don't blame the politicians for doing what they do. Mm -hmm. I don't blame them for doing what they do. Because like I said to you, they they actually lack the intellectual capacity <laughs> to be able to do the right thing in the right way and still look after themselves. It, I think if some of them actually could, they would, but they can't. It's just not there. You're, mm. you're expecting someone to be able to do something that they just don't have the capacity to do. Now, when you look at from a local government level up to... House Assembly, whatever. You you have a big nation like Nigeria whose educational system is completely non-existent. Most teachers couldn't pass the exams they give the students. That is where most of the politicians come from. Bro, Nigerian exams, man. It's not the one. That's where most of the politicians come from. Hmm. Now, these guys also come, no different from America. Mm -hmm. The difference is most of these guys are grassroots and desperate. Mm. they're willing to kill for that money. Anything. Intellectuals are not. Mm. So until they either get educated or intellectuals get braver, Nigeria can't change. Mm. So any brave intellectuals you're saying to, to come into Nigeria? Which is unlikely to happen. So it's better the education system changes. Mm. It's unlikely to happen that you'll get brave intellectuals. Very unlikely. It's, it's very unlikely. They think too much. Or not at all. <laughs> or they just think about themselves. Facts. Facts. Okay. So um, I asked one question quickly before uh, Saleba talks about her trivia questions. Okay. And my, I ask every guest this question is like, if you're the president of Nigeria, what would you do differently? First of all, I'd invest as much money in my company as possible. <laughs> Thief, only, only. Okay, Shout Shout out to energy. Energy. Anyway. You, need to, you need to ask him another question after yeah. about people that move back are mad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, now. Because yeah. <laughs> there's definitely clear examples. Yeah, sorry for him, right? We'll get there. We'll anyway, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, president question. But, but in all honesty, I am not equipped enough to even understand what it will take to fix anything from that level. Mm. I just don't have the the landscape view see enough yeah. to see what it'll take. Mm. Everybody thinks they have an answer. Mm. Everybody thinks they know what to do. Mm -hmm. But look, a lot of people look at me and think, ah, this guy only sells drinks now. I can do that. Mm -hmm. mm. We're, we're, leading, we're leading for a reason. And if anybody and everybody could do it, we wouldn't be leading as much as we are. Mm. Facts. It's the same thing with the Facts. presidency. If mm. anybody and anybody could become the president, mm. Bari knows an example. Um, then anybody would do it. Mm. I respect you being honest to say that you don't yeah, have course. the full view exactly. to, no, to say anything. Yeah. I, 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 I kind of understand that. I, I can have my own. Oh, why doesn't he do this? Why? Did, but it's, it's, it's there's so it's many complexity. But, but if I if if you did force me to say something, mm. I would just say Nigeria just needs to be restructured. Mm. Yeah, a, that's a, a way, that, there's so many in a way that if you if Nigeria was a company, just like America. The first thing I would say is the the defederalization of Nigeria. Mm. Let every state account for itself. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I I'm not a tribalistic person. Mm. I, you know, a lot of people say the north for the problem. Blah 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 blah. I do believe the structural power towards the north is a problem mm -hmm. because of their views of how to control power with their own people. However, there's no southern state. Mm that has their own money, that has done any better. True. Give me a state in Nigeria that has made the North look embarrassed. Mm. They're and all the same. Another question is, what's one thing that you say you love about Nigeria the most? Lawlessness. You love See, lawlessness. I, anyways, let me not get too excited. I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> con I don't endorse that message. Anyways, you've already said it. And then, 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 then. <laughs> Can you look at his lawless human being? He's my zero. I didn't say I wanted to continue. You're yeah. asking what I like. 
I like that. That's as equal to saying freedom. A lot of people say freedom, right? So this is kind of freedom. It's lawlessness. I call it lawlessness. Even me too, I say it's lawlessness. Look at this corrupt individual. No, but it's not law. It's not freedom. It's not freedom. So we have a saying that we feel like anybody that that's like lived in the UK or had a very comfortable situation there and decided to move back to Africa or specifically Nigeria, there must be something wrong in the head. Is that do you agree with that? Yeah. Uh yes and no. <laughs> okay, love right. Some people may not like my answers though. Okay, I'm ready. Explain, I'm actually explain. ready. <laughs> so you have two sets of people that come back to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. You guys may like this point. If you don't, just hold on to it because it's true. <laughs> this answer is true. So you have one set of people that come back to Nigeria, even because their parents are rich or their parents or friends are in government or there's opportunities that have been light for down for them, mm-hmm. or because they genuinely have a passion and want to come back and try. Africa out because so not just Nigeria it happens all across the continent yeah. that accounts for 30% 70% of the people that come back to Nigeria is because they've failed in Europe they're not smart enough to make it in Europe and they feel they can come back to Africa and chance them but you've met people like that majority are I've like not that. met a single we've not met a single person have you yeah, met someone I've like that I haven't met anybody that. like that you haven't met anybody like what all in on all of that our that failed in the UK when I say failed they're not doing great they just doing okay mm. Mm. But on average, on average, well, everybody's doing okay in the UK. Not- like, like okay. Like, if would, you look at your class is okay. Like, they have a stable job. Well, salary, you give a rough they, salary. Yeah, that's not yeah. okay. Everybody okay. has a job. Salary, like, I earn above thirty-five thousand pounds a month. That's okay. That's, that's the average. That's the average salary in the UK. Oh, thirty-five thousand is the average oh, salary. Oh, oh, that, that's failed. Though. <laughs> I know, but that's average. <laughs> but that's average salary <laughs> that's in the UK. <laughs> No, you're, we're looking at average. Fam, that's failed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> from from uni to what age you're only 45? I'm sorry. Uh, but they can they can pay their rent. And they can, <laughs> what rent so, are you paying? <laughs> in Sunderland, or what are you paying? In nah. Sunderland. Nah. And, no, and, no. And, 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 and you know what? That's my point. <laughs> that's my point. You are an average person there. And you come back here because you think you have an accent or you lived abroad. You think you're better than the people here. To be mm. fair, maybe no. some of the girls. I've not, not, I've not, not met them, but maybe some of the girls. If you think about it, some of the girls that moved back for man. Major- they must majority be in that of the bracket. girls. No, no, no. But the girls are moving. The, most of the girls are moving back because of the way the men treat, treat them here. Them. They it's must not be in because bracket. it's not because they're not doing well in the UK. No, but they're not. They're probably not doing Chief, well in the UK. If you're doing well in the UK, no man's gonna bring you to Nigeria. Exactly. Really? Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. As a girl, what, as you're a girl, a girl yes. doing well okay, okay, yeah, 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 anybody here. Yeah, yeah, so well no, 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 no. Exactly. UK is a girl city. If UK the guy, is a exactly. if guy has money enough to yes. look after her, mm. and she's already doing well, exactly. she will tell him straight. Bro, be looking after me yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. no, I, I agree with you. For girls, yes. Yeah, so maybe the girls, maybe the seventy percent, a lot of them are just those girls that when no, they met man. No, 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 no. He's talking about man and everybody. women. Are they are they running from a case? Because certain certain men are running from a case. Certain men. So the man are running from the letters, yeah, boy. But it still boils down to the same thing. HMP are looking. Yeah, it still boils down to the same fee. What's up, Ben? But you know, it's still it's free now. But okay, yeah. did you understand my point? And I, and I, and I don't like that. I, okay. There are many talented Nigerians who are submissive in their employment mm. to very untalented UK, US, China, Germany based mm-hmm. uh, IJBs, as you call them, mm-hmm. and they come back here. And you think because you have a voice or you have a little bit of money or a little bit of exposure, mm-hmm. you're better than the locals here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can bully them, talk to them anyhow. No, it's terrible. See, do you know one thing I used to judge, I say to you? Nigeria as a government doesn't work. But Nigeria as a country doesn't work. How many businesses survive very well in Nigeria? That lasts not a long many. time. Not, not a lot. Many. Not many. That's very and, true. And guess what? That's got nothing to do with the government. Mm. That's to do with the people that run it. You're not good enough to run mm. a business. You're not worthy enough to run a business. You don't have the talent, the ability, or the mental capability or intelligence to run a business. Mm. But while you're fucking up, you're making other people, because Look they bad. grew up here, mm. feel like they're pieces of shit. Mm. But they're not. 100%. And even if they are, they're the same pieces of shit as you. That's why I say Facts. no people get rich by mistake here. I think they're the shit. I actually believe that. The problem that. with Nigeria is there's too many entrepreneurs and not enough sailors. And mm. too many people make money by mistake. I agree with that. And it makes them feel important that, that the there's shit. someone. There's someone. Mm. But anybody can get a government contract. Anybody can facts, get a deal. Facts, 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 yeah. I've found Nigeria to be one of the most 
talented places I've ever been in oh, my life. You, I just, before you came, I told and I, you. And I, this, Crazy. this time, oh, I mean Nigeria. Mm. Mm. The rest of Africa, you people. <laughs> you have not, you have not mm. catching up to two points. Uh, no disrespect. <laughs> no, shout out to Ghana, though. You know, no, <laughs> shout out to where? Shout out to Ghana. <laughs> shout out to Ghana. No, hey, you just came back from Ghana today. Like, come on. <laughs> Be patronizing the way you're coming from, please. <laughs> Let me tell you something, right? Oh, man. I've probably traveled to about 20 countries in Africa. Wow. And I'll say one thing. Mm. Um, to the large majority of staff in Nigeria, uh, fuck you. You have a very bad attitude. I'm telling you. You have a very bad you. understanding of how to work. I'm telling you. But you know what? To the other half, God bless you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because I tell you something. A good work in Nigeria is priceless. I think priceless. it's always the extreme. It's always Compared the extreme. Compared to the rest of Africa. Mm. Mm. Um Ah, Nigerians are trying. They good work in Nigeria is priceless. Nigerians are trying. You see, uh, what's the director called? What director? Kule. Oh, Kule, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He has more passion I'm telling you. for his job. Mm -hmm. Most of the rest of Africa, mm -hmm. they don't even have passion for anything. Our video, our first podcast episode was Kule's first editing video. It was. I had to get rid of one person. <laughs> If you see, uh, I don't want to talk too much on camera. Yeah. I had to chase one away who claimed no, he was an editor. And if was, you see the work he no, produced. And Nigerians have talent. Like, I've all, know. Hmm. And we want, or we always want the best. And to, to find the people that can meet that criteria in Nigeria as like, because standards, you know when you're coming, your standards are like this. And then when you come here, a lot of things are like this standard. It, it we is, have to be but willing to train. Do you think we have to be willing to train? So that's what so? I was just yes, about to say. So one thing that I don't like that happens with people that come from abroad to Nigeria is, they expect to meet talent. Um, for the Nigerians here, let me tell you something. People that come from abroad to Nigeria, they've come, first of all, because they don't have money. A lot don't have as much as you think they have. If they were in the UK, the basics is you'd get any job and you'd expect three months training. Mm. But you yes. come to Nigeria, you don't want to train anybody for three months. Yeah, mm. You want them to be able to have the ability, you want them to be able to do everything from scratch. That usually because you don't have the ability to train them too. Mm. Yeah. You don't have the patience to train them, you don't have the structure to train them. Mm. Yes. But you expect them to have the ability. But where you're coming from, they didn't do that to you. I agree. Oh, mm. that's a gem. No, but it's true. I, I, train, I, train, I train all, all my today. staff members, literally. Like, in fact, like down but let's be gritty. honest, yeah. Most IJGBs or whatever, we hit, they don't have the patience to train. I've the heard patience. about they don't have the ability. Okay. Ability, don't but think, patience is also think important. Because you come from abroad and you've worked for Universal Pictures, you now can come to Nigeria and you're a movie director. No. <laughs> but if you think about Nigeria, no. right? Nigeria, yeah, things move much more slower. It's too slow sometimes. Mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes things move much more slower. If, if you, and, and where? Then the West. Like, when I say West, like London. Sorry, there is no way on earth you can ever get a video director to edit and pull out a, a content faster than he can. No, no, there's Impossible. different. It's, it depends. Right. Let's say, let's In say, London, a guy will tell you first of all, tea break, weekend, <laughs> time off. That's a lie. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm going to close that your ears because you're not working. No way. No, no, no. Right no, no. Don't, don't, don't say this. 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 Because we're already going to say this. Registration. CSC registration. Compared to how much. So when you're talking about organizational structure, the politicians, it's like that on purpose. Exactly. In Rwanda, it takes 30 minutes to register a company. 30 minutes. Them one, yeah. They're ready. It takes 30 minutes. Singapore strategy. So in Nigeria, I also can't blame them why it takes long. It doesn't take long because we don't understand how to make it be fast. But Nigeria as a country it's designed hasn't, on purpose. It hasn't built enough jobs for people <laughs> that people now have to start building jobs within the system. Mm. <laughs> By delaying so the system to collect that's cash. That's what yeah. it is. You have to understand the problem mm. as to why things are. But in terms of speed, bro, you can't tell a carpenter in, in London, oh you're not gonna leave here until you finish this thing. And the guy will stay there day and night until he finishes it. Go and do that in London. Mm. Bro, my friend has a nanny in London. Pays a thousand pounds. I have one. Oh, see that, that nanny in London. Nanny you know what her job is? Comparison to is look mad. after that baby. You and see, that, if that baby makes a mess, that's not her business. Mm -hmm. You see, when she feeds that baby, she drops the dishes in the sink. Mm -hmm. That's not her business. Mm -hmm. See, when it's five o'clock, where are you? Oh, your baby's on the chair. I'm going home. 
So, 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 you can't do that in do Nigeria. Yeah. so what I say about the UK, the UK is where you can find mediocrity, comfortable mediocrity that's celebrated. Whereas mm. in Nigeria, you only find the extremes. You either find an odd literally, mm. that's lazy, that's not willing to work, or you find a grinder. You, you find one of the two. And that's why when you look at the Western world, there's always a, nope. a very good Nigerian yeah, I can community. Spot there from a mile away. <laughs> one move, you're fired. You don't agree, Lanre. <laughs> Nigerians are the best at packaging. You can't spot all of them from. No, ah, you exactly. can't spot all of them. No, no, exactly. but it will take exactly. a while. Once you do it, you, you're you can't out. spot all of them no, you straight can't. away. Nigerians and packaging, dope, <laughs> dope. <laughs> I, 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 I came here, I saw that, I saw your setup. I was like, oh, what's going on here? This is dope. Yeah. I was so cool at the computer. I was like, ah, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's doing. I was like, bro, what's all this shit? I said, man, this room is good, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool, what do you do? He says, I'm the director. Okay, cool. How's this show? I was convinced. The show's great. Cool. Oh, cool. How many streams do they no, have? No. I don't know. <laughs> That's not his job, though. That's not his job to know that. That's not his job. He's just a producer. That's not his job. I would say something. But it, it wouldn't be good. But bro, that's like a coach training an athlete and saying to him, "What's his best times? I don't know. My job is to make him run the fastest. But you don't know. Mm. What are you talking about? How can you even say that? Mm. I've recorded content. The content is out there. How well is the content doing? Mm. How, how can you say? It's, you should know. But it goes back to what you said about that. So someone stole this gen two weeks ago. Yeah, no, he yeah. ain't got time to be checking. No, 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 no. He ain't got time no, to be checking. No, 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 we've spoken. It's not no, I know, I know, no, no, no. I'm should, even joking. I'm answering. You should, you should, you should. I agree. With, I agree. You, you know, yeah. You can imagine a politician running for a campaign, mm. and he's got a campaign manager. Mm. His job is to make himself available. Mm. His job is to prepare himself to talk to the people. Hmm. That's his job. Do you think he's not concerned with how many people hear him? Do you think he's not concerned with yeah, how many yeah, people yeah. see him? If he turns around and tells me as a campaign manager that he's not concerned about that, I'll fucking walk away. Mm. He's not serious. Mm. What do you mean it's not your job to know how many people come? You should want to know. Mm. Before he gets there, you tell him, yeah, this how many, many organizations yeah. have you spoken to? How many potential people am I going to speak to? How many people will see this? Mm. How many more people can we get? Mm. How many organizations are out there you haven't spoken to? Mm. If he mm. tells me, <laughs> that he don't, it's not his job. <laughs> I'm out. No, I, I will stop believing in him. Yeah. I'm out. You should, no, be, I can't you should be concerned. You should want to know. You nah. should be concerned. Because you know something. That is so true. Do you know something, right? I put this show out every week. Hmm. If I just sit down, do the work, put it out. Next week, put it out. Are people watching or not? Mm. I don't know. I don't care. Mm. Fam, so where's your motivation? Yeah, you're getting the bread. Yeah. What are you doing this for? Yeah. Are you are you sure the lighting's right? Are you sure the way you guys are sitting is right? Are you sure people want to focus on her more than you? What oh, are the, 80 what are the men comments? Watch our, eighty percent men watch us. Eighty percent men. Shout out to the shout out to the men. No, no, but, but, but you know giving you say, us the views. No, when you say that to me, because I watch that, the stats, yeah. Nah, so that to me is a problem. Mm. So if it's eighty percent men, so there's mean, a problem and a solution there. <laughs> so maybe you're not dressing or talking in a way to attract more women. So you then have to change something up. And that's how you... That's how nah, you but why am I taking straight shots here? No. Why am I taking straight shots here? Like, no, 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, Larry Ray fam. If you go to a club right now... You know what it is? No, no, it's not like that, you know. You know what it is for me, right? I mean, you go to a private member's club right now. Bro, if you went to... If you were speaking at rallies and only 80% women showed up, it's cool, right? It's happy. But you're going to ask... So if there's 100,000 people here and 80% mm. are women, mm -hmm. we could double the views if we just find a solution <laughs> to get yeah, more men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no, yeah. That, that's just, I, I, everything I do is it's just about it's numbers. data driven. Data driven. So it's, it's good that there's 80% men, but what is wrong that there's no more women? Mm. So so for, for my, what I think here is like, our, our, what we talk about is the really content. important stuff, mm. right? And oh, I'm <laughs> with you there. <laughs> no, you don't even think where I'm going. You don't even think you already you already started judging. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm not there. And the kind I'm of girls there. that Larry talks to. <laughs> uh -uh, I'm not gonna have that. I believe Larry is a man of standards. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not with him on that. I I, I can perceive where you're going. <laughs> okay, uh. let me do my trivia. <laughs> <laughs> so hmm. I'm going to ask you five questions yeah. that are related to the alcohol industry. Just a bit of fun. Let's see how much you can get. 
So first question, most vegetable and almost all fruits contain a small amount of alcohol in them. True or false? If they go rotten, true. Okay, correct. The strongest brew in the world is what percentage? Strongest beer? Yeah, just round, give me a round figure. Probably Guinness, 7.5%. Wrong. Mm. What is it? I don't know how to pronounce this. Scorch bra, scorch bock has 43% ABV. That one will not be beer now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that's, a, <laughs> no? that's a malt already. <laughs> that's not a beer. You're going to more whiskey <laughs> vibes. <laughs> yeah. That's not a beer, mate. Nah. <laughs> Southern Comfort is flavoured with rich fruit. Ah, I, I think it's oranges, you know. So it's called peaches. Peaches, that's it. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Peaches. No, 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 yeah. right. I know. Yeah. I, I, I knew that. It's yeah. peaches, oranges. Yeah. Okay, so which country is the origin of the drink sake? Who? Sake. sake I, yeah. Japanese. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Japanese I was, I was sake. Say, yeah. yeah. Which country consumes the most beer in the terms of volume? America. China. Wrong. Interesting. Which makes sense because they've got the largest population. No, you think it's America? I know it's America. Oh really? Yeah. Anyways, okay. We'll pull the facts. We'll give you. We'll give you three point five. You even gave him a point. You just pull the facts. Pull the facts. Let the audience. Let the audience decide. I'll put five for the vibe he provided. 